a fun little pinfish fly I'm gonna tie up for you today. This is the bubblegum sock tackle, or rather my variation of the bubblegum sock tackle. The bubblegum sock tackle is a fly that I found years and years ago, about 13, 14 years ago. There is a website out on the internet today that's still around. It's called the Fly Tying Forum. And the website used to have a database of flies that people could tie up and submit pictures and information on. And I'm pretty certain that that's where I found the bubblegum saw tackle. And if you do a search, you might find a picture of it out there somewhere on the internet still. The original was tied on a regular uh, nymph hook, just like a saw tackle. Uh, it had a silver tip on the back and it was made with pink uh, floss. Hence the name bubblegum because the pink looked like bubblegum. And then it has just a, a little dubbed thorax body and a, um, a hackle collar on it. I tied some up and they fished pretty well and I liked them, but I started to experiment with it and found that I liked this a little bit better. This is made with a little uh, hot spot in the back and then the body material is actually silly legs, not a floss. Otherwise, the collar and the, the thorax are kind of the same. Just like this a little bit better. It fishes really well. It's a really, really quick, easy fly to tie. So that is the bubblegum saw tackle, or rather my variation of it. And I will get started tying. start the bubblegum soft tackle placing the hook in the vise I'm using a Mustad C49S it's a curved caddis hook you could use you know any any curved scud hook caddis hook kind of thing I just like the curve I think it gives it a little bit more uh, character but you could even do this on a regular nymph hook as I said the Original bubblegum soft tackle was just tied on a regular old nymph hook, straight bodied, and the body was made from pink floss. So I'm just changing it up a little bit. After I debarb the hook, I'm gonna attach some lead. I'm using a 0 0.015 lead wire. You could do this without any lead if you want this to just sink very slow. Depends on what you want the fly to do and where you want it to be fished at. I'm only going to put in about 10 wraps. And then I'll smooth those out. They're going to sit pretty much right at the top of, not quite right behind the eye of the hook. For thread, I'm using a, this is a Danville 6 aught the labels off the spool uh, in chartreuse. I'm gonna put a little bit of wax on my thread just to help grip that a little bit, especially when I'm attaching and getting it on around the lead here. I'm gonna attach this just behind the eye of the hook, run it down to the lead, and then open up my wraps. You can see even just moving the tag in this way has pushed that lead back a little bit. You could add a drop of super glue on there before you put the lead wraps on, and that might help hold it a little bit. But if you just gently wrap back and get to the other side, we can then wrap this in. The tag is secured. I can put a little bit of a thread dam in here to not only hold that lead in place, but to give me a nice taper for the body. Come back up front and the same thing, I'm gonna put in a thread dam here just to kind of taper that so that I don't end up with a ledge and my body material pops off of it as I'm tying. Bring my thread down to just past the barb, not quite as far down as I want it to go. And I'm gonna tie in what 
um, I'm replacing the silver tag on the bubblegum soft hackle with some glow bright. And this is a uh, fluorescent orange. And this is simply to give it just a, a hot spot, as it were. This is, and I'm tying this mostly as a, you know, a panfish fly. So uh, I want to have some nice bright colors that are going to catch the eye. And I'm going to wrap down a little bit on the hook shank, not even an eye length, and then back up so that I can then turn this over and I'll take that glow bright. By the way, this glow bright's very, very thin material. So I've doubled up the strand of glow bright there. I'm going to wrap this in and get two, maybe three wraps in to just give myself a little bit of a hot spot right back at the back of the fly. Trim that off. And then I'm going to wrap down with the chartreuse to cover up the rest of that orange and just cover this up a little bit as I wrap in the body material. Try and prevent some of that orange from showing through. Now, the nice thing about this version of this uh, bubblegum soft tackle is that you can use, I wanted kind of a a rubbery body, something that when the fish bit down on, it had some give to it. So they felt like it was more natural and they wanted to hold on to it longer. I'm going to use for this particular one, some Magnum Predator legs. These are a hairline product and they are a silly leg is essentially all they are. I'm using the Magnums because they're much wider. You can see the, the diameter of that is much wider. Your regular silly legs would be about half of that diameter. Now, that said, you can do regular silly legs on these if you want. This particular version that I did is a little pink version, and this one here has some fluorescent purple glow bright on the back, and that's um, a silver flaked silly legs for the body. Uh, there's two strands in there, the silly legs. So this one, as well as this orange version that I did, the orange here has some fluorescent chartreuse glow bright and uh, orange silly legs, but there's two strands of orange silly legs that are just the regular silly legs. But like I said, the Magnum Predator that I'm using right here is a little bit wider. With my thread maybe a couple of eye lengths behind the eye of the hook, where the thorax is going to eventually be, I'm going to attach those silly legs down and I'm going to wrap this all the way down to where that hot spot is and then back up. One thing you got to be careful with the silly legs one, they can break very easily. Two, you don't want to stretch these too much. If you stretch them a lot as you're, as you're wrapping this in, you'll lose the colors. Uh, it kind of gets a washed out color look. But I'm going to start wrapping this in, and I want to try and keep it a little bit thinner back here as I bring this up. And then as I get farther along, I want to pull on that the silly legs even less and less so that it gives me a little bit thicker body, thicker taper, and it kind of, like I said, just gets a little bit thicker as we get up here towards what will be the thorax. I'm going to stop right there. That will be underneath the thorax and just about almost where the hackle gets tied in. See, it just kind of gives it a nice little segmented body by using the chartreuse thread underneath. It just keeps it a kind of a, a chartreuse or lime kind of color. So it keeps some of that color a little bit. I'm smoothing this off here where the hackle is going to go. I'm bringing my thread back to almost about the, the point of the hook. This is where I'm going to put the thorax in. 
regular soft tackles that have thoraxes, usually it's just some sort of a dubbing, a natural dubbing you could use, like a rabbit, a beaver, something like that. I'm going to be using, this is some um, Dave Whitlock's uh, SLF, uh, Synthetic Living Fiber. And I'm using the Sow Bug Gray. You could vary this up and even use something brighter if you want. I'm just going to go with the gray because that and the Hungarian partridge hackle will contrast nicely with the, the green body. You don't have to make the thorax that thick or full. It's up to you. I like it to be a little bit uh, chunkier. So I'll get about a two inch dubbing noodle here and wrap this in. So I have just a nice kind of beefy thorax here. Get my thread down a little bit behind the eye of the hook and we'll get our hackle tied in. They said the hackle on this is a Hungarian partridge. Uh, if you can see this, I'll try and get this up here. I'm using the uh, darker hackles that are not quite down to the tail, but lower in the back here. Uh, I want a little bit longer barbs on these, but I don't want them so long that it doesn't look proportionally correct. There's my hackle. So I've got something here that when this is palmered in, the last remaining hackles uh, will be about this length right here. So they're not going to be, you know, short, real short, but they're going to be long. I just want it to look like some nice long legs. If you were to try and, I look at this as more of an attractor pattern, but if you were trying to look at it as mimicking something, it would probably be mimicking a caddis. Taking the tip of the hackle in my pliers, I'll stroke back these barbs so that I have the tip exposed like this. And then I will trim away most of that tip so I end up with just a little triangular piece like this as an anchor. Bringing that down, actually going to bring it down this way and I'll pull to the left a little and then wrap this right up against that dubbing, leaving my thread hanging right there. Get my hackle pliers out. I'm only going to get probably two wraps of this. And that's fine. I don't really want a big bushy collar. I just want something that is going to, again, just kind of represent some legs. Stroking those barbs back, I don't want them to get trapped in a forward direction underneath the hackle. And as you can see, I just got two wraps on there. And that's all I need. Securing that in, I'm going to trim away the excess here. And then stroking all of these barbs back, I'll bring my thread right up behind the eye of the hook to make a small little chartreuse head on this. It doesn't have to be real big or pronounced. Four or five turn whip finish. And some head cement.
And there you have my version of the bubblegum soft tackle. I did tie some of these without any lead on them. I prefer them with the lead a little bit. This is one that I tied without the lead on it. And the only real difference is the body's going to be just a little bit skinnier. So I kind of like it. The lead actually adds to or aids in the uh, production of that tapered body. Uh, and it looks very, very nice in my opinion. So that's the bubblegum soft tackle. Again, this was, I'm pretty certain it was created as a panfish fly when I first found it. That's what I've tied it up and used it for, but experimenting a little bit, I like this version a little bit better. That the body has just got a nice, kind of almost translucence to it, and it just looks more natural and it's soft, and I think the fish will hold on to it a little bit better. So there is the bubblegum soft tackle, or rather my variant of it. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at Device today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, Remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.